pretty much everything you need to know about taming and using a Mana Garmer in Ark Survival Evolved. Mana Gamisters can only be located within the Snow Biome and the Ark Extinction DLC map. They can be found pretty much anywhere within the biome, given their sporadic and unpredictable nature, but I've personally noticed higher spawn rates near the border on the left side and top of the biome. Just look into the sky for the ominous jet trails and Sub-Zero's multi-directional fluid streams to bag yourself one of J.K. Rowland's LSD-inspired napkin sketches. So, how do you go about taming one of these cat, wolf, wyvern, Boeing 707, upside-down duct tape cans of condensed air? Well, the Managamir is a standard knockout tame, so use your best means possible to knock the thing unconscious. These things are extremely sporadic and will jump all over the place in random order, attacking everything that has a pulse. Oh, holy sh**! To make matters worse, it can freeze you and your mount, so try to keep moving around to prevent it from accurately targeting you. With all of this in mind, there are a few methods that you can use to tame the Managamir. Mirror. Method number one is to place down a large bear trap and attempt to catch the Mandrake. If you have a good enough long neck rifle, you may be able to simply knock the thing out once it's caught, because they don't have very high torpor levels. You can also place down multiple bear traps, which will trap it again once the previous one's timer has ran out. Otherwise, you may need to lure it into a structure to trap it, but this is harder than it seems given how spastic they jump around, coupled with the attention span of a goldfish. They also cannot fit through a normal gateway, so you will have to place it down after they're inside of your structure, or seal off your trap with something else altogether. Method number two is to use a mid-sized tame as sort of a bodyguard while you attempt to trank it on foot. The reason that you need this bodyguard is to hide underneath of it whenever the mana guarder uses its frost breath or its dive bomb attack. When it lands on the ground, try to kite it around in circles because it'll have a harder time hitting you. You will need a decent armor to tank the hits you'll be receiving, but the frost breath and the dive bomb attack are definitely the biggest threats. And finally, method number three is to use a snow owl to freeze the mana potion, and then you can repeat the process of method number one to keep it trapped, but I wouldn't recommend this. It's extremely hard to do, and they end up jumping through or out of every structure you try to place down. Having a tribe mate would certainly help, because one of you can keep it frozen while the other one places structures, but I still find this really clunky. So, once you've got yourself a sleepy little Lord of the Rings character rejection, you need to feed that the Monogger's top three foods are... Extraordinary Kibble, Exceptional Kibble, and Raw Mutton. The torpor drains really slow, so you shouldn't need any narcotics if you're using one of these foods, even on official servers. So, let's dive into all of the functions of the Michael Jackson. They have a left mouse button bite that does mid-range damage, a right mouse button aimable frost breath that does scaling damage based on how close to your target you are, a control key bite that seems to be identical to the left mouse button, a spacebar jetpack jump that launches you into the air, a spacebar plus WAD controllable aerial dash, and a spacebar plus left mouse button jetpack lunge that launches you into the next f***ing time zone. It's worth mentioning that jumps and aerial dashes work on a stamina deficit system. So the more of them you do in a row, the higher the stamina cost becomes. The jumps seem to scale on numbers of 100, with the first jump costing 100 stamina, and subsequent jumps costing that plus an additional 100 stamina based on the number of jumps you're on. For example, the first jump will cost 100 stamina, the second jump will cost 200 stamina, the third jump will cost 300 stamina, etc, etc. Thank you, wiki page. When you land, this deficit counter is fully reset. So, what is the main use of the Monog? Well, given how versatile they are, they can fill the shoes of a few different roles, but I would definitely say that their primary roles are that of a travel mount or of a support mount. If a travel mount is what you're looking for, I would suggest investing heavily into stamina and movement speed. Monogamers can walk faster than most creatures can run, and use very little stamina when sprinting. Couple this with their ability to perform aerial lunges, and you have yourself a personal little Sanic! The best method I've found for travel is to jump once, and then perform an aerial lunge. When you land, it will reset the stamina deficit counter, allowing you to repeat this process over and over again at the lowest possible stamina cost. Avoiding jumping altogether is another good option, because, as aforementioned, their stamina cost when sprinting is extremely low, so you can run for very long periods of time. They're also extremely fast in the water, which absolutely blew my mind at first. I mean, seriously. Who... who designed you? Hey, yo, Greg, I've got a great idea for a new creature in Ark. Let's make a cat-wolf dragon that can't fly but can glide, shoots frost out of its mouth, shits non-stop, and swims like Adam Sandler and you don't mess with the Zohan. Okay, that sounds great. Let's pack it and ship it. If a support mount is what you're looking for, I would suggest investing heavily into health, stamina, and damage, with the most emphasis on stamina. A Magnum PI's speed and ranged frost breath makes it great for quickly providing support where needed. It is especially useful in PvE events like supply drops and element nodes, because it can freeze oncoming enemies to allow for tribe mates or allies to deal with them before they can reach the center. 
In PvP, the aerial dive attack is capable of dealing high damage to enemy players, although they recently fixed it where it no longer damages players on the backs of their mounts. The Frost Breath, on the other hand, can still kill players riding on the backs of their mounts, and it is great for trying to catch players who are trying to run away. Alright, well that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please be sure to drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and leave me comments down below because the voices demands it!